to look at okay topic of PPE okay in reference to MFRS 116 property plan and equipment we refer to Tang Leong Tong textbook 7 edition chapter 10 uh, on the page of 393-243-8. Okay, under MFRS 116, we're going to look at the definition of PPE, the recognition criteria, measurement, which is divided into initial measurement and subsequent measurement, derecognition, and finally, disclosure. Okay, so let's look at what are property, plan, and equipment. This is for us to look at into the definition. What are property, plan, and equipment? Okay, according to MFRS 116, property, plan, and equipment are tangible items that are held for use in the production. For example, machinery used in a production land line to manufacture cars or supply of goods example retail point of sales equipment or providing service okay or rental for others or for administration purposes i.e computer equipment used by an entity administration staff and this Item are expected to be used during more than one year period. So we can say that help for several purposes, either for use in production, or for supply of goods, providing service, or rental to others, or it can be also for administrative purposes. Okay, the recognition of property, plan, and equipment. Okay, the cost of an item of PPE shall be recognized as an asset if first, it is probable that future economic benefit associated with the item will flow to the entity and the cost of the item can be measured reliably. So we have two recognition. One, you recognize it whether it's a PPE or not that meet the criteria as mentioned earlier then when it's considered to be PPE you're going to recognize it further whether it can be recognized as an asset or not if you recognize it as an asset then you're going to have uh, this item of PPE in your statement of financial position Okay, when we talk about uh, recognition, we look into also control. Okay, PPE is recognized when entity obtain control of the item. So how do we know that the entity already obtained control? Okay, first we can look at in terms of transfer of risk and benefit of the asset to the entity. Secondly, whether an entity has a legal title or physical possession. So this is among the guidelines that we can look into in order for us to identify whether the control is obtained or not. However, sometimes the transfer of control may not coincide with the transfer of legal title or physical possession. Okay, which means that you can have the risk and reward uh, related to the asset, but the asset is not actually belongs to the entity. Okay, let's take for example, uh, Digital World Berhad. Okay. In January 2014, Digital World Berhad embarked into another business of providing photocopy service which is expected to increase the profit of the company. On 2nd January, the company purchased two units of special photocopy machine from Korea at a total cost of 150000 Okay. In addition, the company incurred installation costs of 20,000 
custom duty of 15,000 and transportation cost of 5,000 for both machine. Okay. Both machines have a five years economic life and a total salvage value of 30,000. The depreciation uh, use is method or uh, on yearly basis. So in here, if the question asks you to identify whether the machine is an asset or not. So the answer will be yes, the machine is an asset of digital world but because okay, how do we know that the machine is an asset? Because it is a resource controlled by the company. How do we know that the resource is controlled by the company? Because digital will purchase the machine. Okay, and then by having the photocopy machine, it is probable that future economic benefit associated with the item will flow to the entity since it will be to provide a service that will bring more cash. Okay, when digital will have more photocopy machine, they can produce or they can provide more service, more service meaning that more future economic benefit. And of course, from the list of monetary value, the cost price uh, given earlier, we can actually measure the cost reliably. Okay, then using the same example, the question may ask you to describe if the machine is an item of property, plant and equipment in accordance to MFRS 116. Okay, because a Asset can be tangible, asset can be intangible, asset can be PPE, asset can be cash, asset uh, can be several category of item. So what about the machine that we purchase, uh, that digital world purchase, can it be classified as PPE? Suggest the answer, yes. So how do we know that the machine is an item of PPE? It is because... It is a tangible item that are help for use in providing photocopy service. Okay, and they are expected to be used for more than one year period since the machine has the economic life of five years. So it made the criteria to be classified or recognized as property, plant and equipment. So once you already agree that the item or in digital world example, the machine is or can be recognized as PPE, the idea is now digital world has one new PPE. So they're going to record the PPE. In order for them to record the PPE, they need the monetary value to record it with. Okay, so... We're going to look at the next part of MFRS 116 is the measurement. What is the value that we're going to use in order for us to recognize PPE? So in this situation, we're going to look at the initial measurement. Initial meaning that uh, mula-mula, at the beginning of the process. Okay, so initial measurement. Okay, is an item of PPE that qualify for recognition as an asset shall be initially measured at cost. Okay, so it's initially measured at cost. Cost, in other hand, is the amount of cash or cash equivalent paid to acquire an asset at the time of its acquisition or Construction plus the fair value of other considerations. So it depends whether you purchase or you construct the PPE. Costs in this situation include purchase price, which may comprise of import duty, uh, discount and rebates. And it will also include any cost directly attributable to bringing the asset to its current location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in the manner intended by the management. So in here, we have a general idea of what 
will be included as part of the cost. Okay, and cost also include the initial estimate of dismantling and removing the item and restoring the site where it is located if the entity is obliged to do so. Okay, initial estimate of dismantling and removing the item. For example, you build factory in a certain place. So there is an obligation for you to uh, dismantle it or remove it after you use it. Okay, for example, kalau kita tengok uh, syarikat cari gali, uh, cari gali minyak, they have this pelantar minyak di tengah laut. So, they have the obligation pas dah sudah aktiviti cari gali, they have to dismantle and remove them from the site. So, if that is the situation, they need to include it in the initial cost in estimated amount okay so uh in FA, uh, far 410 we're going to look at ppe in term of ppe purchase for cash and also self-constructed ppe okay we refer back to example one digital world berhad okay so in finding the initial cost we have total cost installation cost cost safety and transportation cost. So how do we calculate the initial cost of the machine? It will include total cost of purchase $150,000, installation cost $20,000, custom duty $15,000, transportation cost $5,000, installation cost and transportation cost that is considered as any cost Okay, any cost attributable in bringing the asset into its present location and condition. Transportation to bring it into the location. Installation cost to bring it into its present condition. Maknanya kalau tak install, tak boleh guna. So you have to incur the cost. Giving you an initial cost of the machine will be 190000 Okay, so once you already have the initial cost of the machine, you then can debit your PPE 190,000 credit, either cash or any amount payable. Okay, example number two, uphill berhad. Okay, uh, uphill berhad is due 2014 final examination question for Subject FAR 410. Okay, up here require one of its machine on 1st January 2008. The machine is used to manufacture gymnasium and fitness equipment. The detail of the machine are given as follow. So we have several items: invoice price, delivery cost, import duties and taxes, insurance on shipment. General administrative cost, installation cost. This time we have estimated dismantle cost, but we are giving two value, either 1,800 or the present value of the dismantling cost amounted to 1,500. So in this example two, how do we find the initial cost of the machine? So, of course, first item, invoice price, 51000 Delivery cost, 8500 Import duties and taxes, 42500 Insurance on ships, 680 Installation charge, 1020 Estimated dismantling cost, we're going to take the present value because uh, 1800 given earlier, this is the amount that the company have to pay after they use the machine, which is in five years' time. So when we want to calculate the initial cost, we need to bring it to the present value. In this case, it gives us the amount to be 1,500. So based on this calculation, you can see that what is not included 
Okay, what is not included is the administrative cost. Okay, because administrative cost does not meet the criteria of any attributable cost in bringing the asset into its present location and condition. Therefore, based on this calculation, initial cost of the machine is one hundred and five thousand two hundred. So remember, if you have a situation that involving this mentaling cost, make sure to take it at present value. So previously we have. Initial measurement indicate that at the very beginning, when you first purchase the machinery, that is your initial measurement. However, you must also remember that along the process of using the machine or on the, along the process of using your PP, you will incur some other expenditure. So this expenditure is considered to be or is known to be uh, subsequent expenditure there is very important thing that you need to remember that in mfrs we have also subsequent measurement and, and it's like you have subsequent expenditure one thing that you need to be clear subsequent expenditure is different from subsequent measurement okay, so we look going to look at into subsequent expenditure uh first okay subsequent expenditure for example we have routine repair subsequent meaning that seterusnya okay uh perbelanjaan perbelanjaan seterusnya so you have repair maintenance servicing cost okay normally above cost is recognized in uh, statement of profit or loss as expenses Okay, because you're just maintaining, providing service of your PPE. However, normally you go to expenses under the in statement of profit or loss. However, this subsequent expenditure, uh, however, if this subsequent expenditure increase or enhance the value of a set, expenditure should be recognized as part of the cost. Which means that this amount of subsequent expenditure meet the criteria of uh, to be recognized as a set. Okay, which means that uh, this subsequent expenditure relates to enhance of the value of the asset. The expenditure uh, should be recognized as part of the cost. For example, we have aircraft industry. They need to replace its seat several times during the life of the aircraft okay so uh, replacing the seat is subsequent expenditure because you berlaku so you dah beli dah guna the aircraft okay but this uh, replacement of seat will definitely enhance the value of the asset okay because kalau buruk mungkin orang tak uh, tak berminat nak naik when you uh, change it to uh, the new one it will increase your image and will attract more customer okay. we go back to example two just now okay up here berhad on 1st january 2010 up here berhad upgraded the machine by adding a new component at a cost of six thousand Eight hundred and eighty. So in here you can see that it's a subsequent expenditure. How do you know? Because you acquired a machine on first January two thousand eight, okay, and now you spend six thousand eight hundred and eighty uh, uh, in two thousand ten. So the component reduces. The production time when you uh, upgrade the component reduce the production time and the useful ta uh, useful life of the machine was revised so briefly explain the accounting treatment okay uh, of the upgrade cost of six thousand eight uh, six thousand eight hundred and eight 
Okay, so in here, we we'll briefly explain the accounting treatment of the upgraded cost of 6880 So in this situation, what you're going to have is, okay, the amount of 6880 6, will be capitalized. Capitalized meaning that it will be added to the value of your asset. Okay. Uh, not going to expand up to profit or loss, but it will be capitalized. Okay, capitalized to the set value because the component, uh, the new component, the upgraded new component, okay, managed to reduce the production time, meaning that we can produce more product with a uh, low production time and the useful life of the machine was also revised five years money estimated useful life here dipanjangkan lagi when they have the new component okay next we going to look at depreciation okay i think uh, most of you are familiar with depreciation Okay, depreciation is a systematic allocation of depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. The depreciable amount of an asset, the depreciable amount of an asset shall be allocated on a systematic, Okay, on a systematic basis of uh, its useful life, depreciable amount is the cost of an asset or other amount substitute for cost less its residual value. Okay, the residual value of an asset is the estimated amount that an entity would currently obtain from disposal of the asset after deducting the estimated cost of disposal if the asset were already of the age and the condition expected at the end of its useful life. So residual value is uh, the value that you can gain if you dispose the asset after you uh, complete using it at the end of estimated useful life. Okay, uh, in order for you to calculate this, depreciation you have three method of calculating depreciation you have straight line method reducing or diminishing balance method and units of production the depreciation charge for a period is usually recognized in statement of profit or loss okay uh the journey entry for depreciation expenses will be debit depreciation expenses okay that one be in statement of profit or loss and credit accumulated depreciation that you minus from your PPE in your statement of financial position. So method, we have three straight line method, reducing balance method, units of production. Depreciation is expenses. So if we refer to example three, we have Okay, on 1st January 2000X, an entity acquired a ready-to-use photocopier for use by its administration staff in exchange for 12,000 cash. The depreciation rate of 10% per annum. So from that simple example, you are required to compute the depreciation expenses for two years using all the three methods provided. Okay, and from that, you are required also to show the journal entry. Okay, so what I'm trying, uh, you should try to see is the difference between straight letter, reducing balance method, and units of production. Okay, if we use straight line method, you uh, you can I uh, you can use any of these two formula. However, it will depend on the information available okay you can find depreciation by multiplying uh, the percentage the rate of depreciation with the cost cost multiply with percentage or you can have cost minus residual value over useful 
life. Okay, but in order for you to use percentage time curves, you need to be given percentage. Okay, if you want to do the second uh, formula, you need the, all the three concords, residual value, and also useful life. So based on the previous example, okay, for you, Year 1, 12,000 is, is the cost of the asset multiplied 10%. So for year 1, depreciation is 1,200. For year and from 12,000, the amount is still maintained at 1,200. That's why we call it straight line method because the amount will be sama sahaja throughout the year. Straight sahaja. On the other hand, for reducing balance method, we will have percentage also, but the percentage is multiplied with carrying amount. Kalau uh, straight line method, kita time dengan cost. But reducing balance method, we need to find, uh, we need to multiply it with carrying amount. So what is carrying amount? Carrying amount is equal to cost minus accumulated depreciation. So based on this formula, for year 1, carrying amount is 0. Tak ada lagi depreciation. So you take 10% times 12,000. You have depreciation for year 1 using reducing balance method is 1,200 which is the same as using straight line method. However, for year 2, since you already have the accumulated depreciation, you need to first find the carrying amount, cost 12,000 minus accumulated depreciation 1,200. You multiply the carrying uh, value amount with the 10%. What you get is depreciation for year 2 is 1,080. So you can see that the amount of depreciation is reduced, okay? Because the, the carry amount that you're going to use to like it with is also reduced. Okay, finally, uh, for calculation of depreciation using unit of production, we have the cost multiply with number of work done in the carriers over total estimated cost total estimated work done over the useful life so cost 12000 okay multiply if uh, it with year one number of work done given in the question is 5000 total estimated work done is 100000 so you multiply that amount you get depreciation for year one is 600 whereas for year two is uh, 960 so you can see that using units of product method if you use uh, uh, the machine more charge depreciation more okay so with that thank you okay, you can see that based on the depreciation that you get Okay, based on the depreciation that you can get, the figure is different once you get the figure according to the formula, according to the, to the method that you use. Then the figure, uh, you, when you record it into your account using the journal entry, the journal entry, the recording process will be similar regardless of the method used. Method to tentukan nilai depreciation tapi the accounting treatment will be the same okay so uh, with that uh, we finish with a uh, part one of property plan and equipment